When we're thinking about Lady Zainab, the first thing we have to think of is where does she come from? What's her family background? So this is the granddaughter of the Prophet Muhammad, the daughter of his daughter Fatima and of Ali, his son-in-law. She grows up in the prophetic household and she is a young girl, perhaps six or so, by the time of his death. So the first lesson that we take is that Zainab, together with her two brothers, Hassan and Hussein, are actually growing up in the most formative years, literally at the knee of the Prophet himself. So they are imbibing from him the way of Islam. And this reminds us of the enormously powerful influence that mothers have especially as their children are growing up in those very young formative years when they are able to imbibe, to, to drink in the adab, the way of Islam, from the mother. So Zainab gives us this memory, this thought of the importance of the mother in the life of children. Now, Zainab's own mother, Lady Fatima, dies just a, a short time after the Prophet himself. And so she is now growing up with her father, Imam Ali, and with Hassan and Hussein, her brothers. And so we see this very close family network where they are sharing together the wisdom of the Quran, the wisdom of the Prophet, and they are growing together in deepening their own spirituality, their own way of life. So this reminds us then, thinking of the young Zainab, the way in which we are to encourage and train and chain, uh, to, to, to nurture our children in the way of Islam, in the inner spiritual dimensions of Islam, and not just in the outward observance, because the, the inner dynamic, the intention of the heart, is at the very essence of Islam. And so all the outer dimensions, all the outer practices, are there to train the heart closer in its journey, in its ascent toward God. If we move on then and we see Lady Zainab as a young, mature woman, she takes over the responsibilities that her mother had held before her of being a teacher of Quran and a teacher of the way of Islam. And therefore we think especially not just as women mothers as role models, but also as being formal teachers teaching not only the girls and daughters, but also teaching the men, the boys of the community. Because both Lady Fatima and Lady Zainab are renowned teachers and scholars of the way of Islam, of the meaning of the Quran. If we think then of the time leading up to the tragedy of Karbala, we know that something awful has happened in the Muslim community by this time, that corruption has set in. And corruption sets in in a way in which all those who are in leadership roles within the community are asked to give an oath of allegiance to a corrupt leader. And of course, Imam Hassan has now died, Hussein has taken over as the leader of the community uh, and he will not give this oath of allegiance to Yazid. And so we see the scene being set for the journey to Karbala. When we think about the party of Hussein travelling through the desert, we think mainly of the men of those who were to become the martyrs of the field of Karbala. But let's stop for a moment and think about the women who made that journey too, who faced every element of the hardship of that journey. 
not only the heat, the dirt, the sand, the dust, but also the exhaustion of that travel, of not knowing what was going to happen. Now, it's bad enough for men who are trained into the ways of the desert. But when we think of women in that situation, not just women, but mothers, some with children at the breast, who are then having to keep their children motivated, to keep their children going, so that they can make this journey together. And then as the hardships of the journey go on, Imagine the state of a mother who is listening to her child crying with thirst, crying with hunger, and is unable even to offer her her own mother's milk. This was the state of the women in that final journey to Karbala. And we see Zainab in this situation becoming the leader of those women who is strengthening them who is giving them a share in the vision of why we are doing this, of the necessity of standing up against tyranny and injustice. And so she becomes a motivating factor within the community of the women on their way to Karbala itself. As we see that journey coming to its ultimate climax, there is a nonsense that is often talked in common parlance in the world that women are the weaker sex. What utter nonsense. Let's consider. Not only are the women enduring all the hardships of the journey and of being at Karbala, but it is they who have to prepare their menfolk to take the field of battle in the certain knowledge that the enemy is arrayed against them in overwhelming numbers. And we see Zainab here in her true mettle. Every mother wants to protect her children. Every mother wants to cherish them and shield them from harm. And yet here is Zainab for the higher cause. We have the tradition that she speaks to her brother, Imam Hussein, and he says to her, the religion of our grandfather is at stake. This is all that Zainab needs to hear. And she, with a full heart, prepares and offers her two sons to take the field at Karbala and to take the martyr's crown. What kind of strength then is possessed by women? not only in her time, but in our own time and through all the human centuries, women who have had to prepare their menfolk to go to war, whether it be husbands or brothers or sons, and then to wait and to pray and to support them as best they can during that moment of trial. So Zainab acts as a pillar of strength, as a vision to say to us there is something more important than even life itself. There is something not just worth living for, but something worth dying for. Rather than giving in to tyranny and oppression, to take a stand, even at the cost of your own two dear sons. We see that being played out today around the world. We see it with the Rohingya people in Burma. We see it in Syria, in Iraq. We see it as well in Yemen and in so many other places around the world. We have become expert at destroying human life in our own time. And yet that human dimension of the mother preparing her sons, her brothers, her husband to go into the field is ever present. And so Zainab acts as a pillar of inspiration in this situation. And then after the battle itself, with the inevitable death of Imam Hussein and of his companions, then comes the awesomeness of the soldiers ransacking the tents, 
the women not knowing what's going to happen, and Zainab again acts as the leader of the women, drawing them together, giving them the strength to stand up with dignity against these soldiers. And then they're taken off in a most ignominious way, first of all to Kufa, and there they are subjected to ridicule by the governor of Kufa, who then declares that he is going to kill the son of Imam Hussein, the future Imam Zain al Abidin. And here Zainab performs an act of enormous courage. She throws herself upon the young man and she says, you'll kill me before you'll kill him. And in this great act of heroism, she preserves and saves his life so that he can become the spiritual leader of the community for the next generation. And then we see again, once they are taken from Kufr to Damascus, where they come into the court of Yazid. Now, in the court of the tyrant, what is the appropriate way to act? Well, again, Zainab sets the message. You are to stand and you are to speak not only words of truth, but words that are charged with the emotion, with the justice that is demanded at the moment. And we know that she makes a speech before Yazid in which she calls him for what he is, a tyrant, an abuser of people, an abuser of men, women and children, the son of a freed slave. And then finally we see the, the last scene in the life of Lady Zainab when she acts as counsellor to the young Imam Zain al Abidin, where he does not make major decisions without first seeking the counsel of his aunt, because he acknowledges her wisdom, her spiritual depth, and her knowledge and understanding of the way of Islam. And so they journey together on the way to Medina, First of all, going to the field of Karbala, where they are able spiritually to embrace that moment once again and to take from it the strength and courage to go on in the path that they know to be true. And it's not long after that, of course, that Lady Zainab herself dies. So we see then in Zainab a model for the women of every generation, for the women of today. A model of strength based on faith, on uprightness, on truth. Uh, a strength that is there not only to support the children, but also to support the men of the community. The women are the bearers of souls. They give that vision which others are to follow. And therefore we can say that Lady Zainab is for every age, for every culture, for all peoples, an image, a model, a vision and inspiration for women of all time.